If the Supreme Court strikes down the individual um, mandate, what happens? Brought in two people that um, can spell out what we could maybe possibly be in store for. John Goodman, he's the president and CEO, National Center for Policy Analysis, and Mario Loyola, he's the director for the Center for Tenth Amendment Studies at Texas Pub Public Policy Foundation. He was the lead author of three amicus briefs, file, uh, briefs filed by um, his organization, the Supreme Court, to challenge Obamacare today. Justice Alito uh, referenced one of them. Um, and we were just talking here, by the way, hello, both of you. Um, let me start here. First, do you think, one word answer, it's going to be struck down? The individual mandate? Mandate, yeah. I think it's better than 50-50. I do, too. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about, um, A, why just the individual mandate? Why not the whole thing? It doesn't, it, it doesn't have a severability clause in it, does it? Well, the, the way that the court will approach this issue is that it will say, which, what parts of the rest of the law are so interwoven with the mandate that they have to follow along with the mandate? Or what parts of the law are independent from the mandate and can survive without the mandate? And would Congress have passed the remainder without the mandate? And so the possible outcomes, you know, it could, it could uphold the rest of the law, it could strike down the entire law, or it could uphold, it could strike down some combination of provisions. How does it even know the whole thing is a mess? How would anybody know? It is a mess, and uh, if they strike down the individual mandate, but keep the part that says insurance companies have to sell to anyone who wants their policies all for the same premium regardless of their health condition, then we're in real trouble because people will just wait until they get sick to buy their insurance. Uh, they'll get their health care, get their medical bills paid, and then they'll drop coverage. This is, I mean, the Obama administration does this every time. It is win-win for them. No matter what happens, it's always win-win for them because this... This is bad uh, if it stands. I mean, really bad. But if it, if it doesn't stand, it's bad. I, I don't agree with that. I, th okay. I, I think they're in trouble if this gets uh, knocked down. Why? Because they look incompetent. They put together an incompetent bill that wasn't constitutional. Uh, it, it was put together in a reckless way, and everybody knows it. And, uh, it but we've known that from the beginning. I mean, the American people have known that from the beginning. What is it, 70% now, 73% say they don't want it. Even 30%, even only 30% of those who want this bill, only 30% say it's constitutional. So they do. And, and, and think about it this way. Uh, if the individual mandate is struck down and the rest of the law is upheld, what you're going to be left with is a law that is much more socialistic than the one that we have now. So the Solicitor General can say that he wants the insurance reforms to be struck down if the individual mandate gets struck down, but they have to argue that in order to convince the court that the individual mandate is constitutional. I, I think that, that there are people in the administration who want to see the individual mandate struck down and the rest of the law upheld, because then what you're looking at is a massive subsidy scheme. Oh, jeez. Okay, so um, where do we go from here? What, 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 what is the approach after this? Well, I think what immediately happens, if the Supreme Court strikes down the individual mandate, it gives Republicans in the Senate an opportunity to bring up this issue, forces Harry Reid to bring it to the floor, and talk about all of this before the election. That's the last thing Democrats want to happen. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's going to be a topic of conversation in the final months. And What happens to the, um, what happens to the uh, insurance companies that have all now pretty much retooled and said, okay, brace for this? What, what, what happens to them? How do you, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know how you are a doctor or a prescription drug company, uh, um, a health care company, an insurance company. How, how, what do you do now? Well, if the insurance companies are going to be in a lot of trouble if the individual mandate gets struck down and the rest of the law gets upheld. But they have only themselves to blame for that because they, they bought into this whole scheme because when they saw they the did. individual mandate, they saw lots of young people who don't cost anything to insure being forced to pay them lots of premiums and that was their profit motive when we come back I want to play a, a real quick clip um, of the president um, he was at a I think it was a, a union meeting where he said look we're just gonna we, we just got to get the White House we got to get the Senate and the House and then we'll put this thing through but he was talking about and 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 so were the people at Tides Foundation they they specifically said we take this one step and then we pretty much put insurance companies out of business and that's what I'm hearing from you if this is struck down. Insurance companies go out of business. 
Yeah, I mean, they're going to go to Congress screaming bloody murder. What do you think? Well, they'll be in real trouble. They're very nervous right now. Um, and uh, is, there a, is there an upside? I got to take a break and then come back and just tell me, is there an upside to this? Because yes. I was really happy. Yes. And then I'm talking to you guys and I'm like, okay, this isn't really good. Back in a minute. So this, I, I mean, this is what they've been after the whole time. If you pull away the mandate, this is what this is what their solution will be. Right. Single payer health care because the health care industry will collapse. Right. I mean, what this what this Obamacare does is it in, is it dramatically increases the cost of insuring people. But you've taken away the mechanism that was paying for it, the the individual mandate. So th this is also just just skyrockets the national debt, right? Doesn't it? Uh, yes, yes. It makes health insurance more expensive. Only sick people have insurance. They, if they did let the private insurers go out of business, then yes, the government would be the only insurer left standing. Um, somehow, I think, well, I, 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 th mean. I think we'll be able to resist that, however. I think, I think this puts the Obama administration in trouble and the Democrats on the defensive if this goes down. This is fantastic. Okay, one last question, and this could be almost erotic, <clears throat> depending on your answer. Um, the Commerce Clause. Um, uh, most people don't even know this case from the New Deal, and it changed everything. Everything. Um, any chance this is the beginning of the undoing of that? I hope so. This is the lawyer over here, but I hope so. Yes. I I think that if you, if you repeal, uh, if you overturn. Uh, Wickard, you repeal the entire federal government. Amen. And, and uh, I mean, Amen. Department of Labor, Department, all the regulations that we know now, Department of Commerce. I mean, basically, the entire federal government, as we know it today, has been built upon this t foundation of this terrible decision known as Wickard versus Filburn. And by the way, I mean, a lot of people don't know it. Everyone who goes to law school knows it. I mean, I remember oh, yeah, it, exactly it, it, what was going on around me when I read that case. Yeah, it is the re <clears throat> that is the only reason. Yeah. That we do everything that we do now in Washington. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it, blew, it blew apart all of the Constitution's limits on federal power. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, you know, it was interesting to see yesterday, the Solicitor General had a terrible day yesterday, okay? But, he's but, had a uh, bad week. He's had a bad week, but he had a terrible day yesterday. One reason was that uh, the Chief Justice and Scalia kept going after him asking, well, if the government can force you to buy health insurance, what can it force you to do? Mm -hmm. And he couldn't say what the limit was on federal power, but the thing is, that, that after Wickard, the Supreme Court hasn't been able to say what the limit right. is on and federal he hasn't, power. He also in that he, he he also couldn't talk at all about why this was different. He kept saying, "Well, um, because it's a, you know it doesn't interstate commerce." Well, wait a minute. Excuse me. What? What? I mean, of course it affects interstate commerce in the same way that all of your other stupid rules do. Right. Right. I mean, it, it's just I just saw it. And I just thought this is this is acid at yeah. that case. Right. Justice Roberts said, uh, can the federal government require us all to buy a cell phone? Right. And if not, why not? And he couldn't answer that question. Right. And he because he said, we don't look at that as a market. <laughs> cell phones? I know <laughs> Apple looks at cell phones as a market. And, and, and so it's, it's clear to me that since at least the 1990s and the decision of Lopez versus the United States, that the Supreme Court um, it may not be able to overturn Wickard because it doesn't feel like it can just repeal the whole federal government. But it's definitely started to walk away from Wickard. And it started, and Scalia has been very clever in putting in place the foundations to start unraveling this entire line of precedent. Any, any idea what businesses should do? I, I mean, I'm, I'm a guy who we have had, you know, our health care costs are skyrocketing. 
Um, and nobody, I mean, we had the most expensive health care in New York. We were the only company remaining in New York that had this health care coverage. And um, they couldn't believe it when we took it. I'm like, I'm going to take it as long as I possibly can. They didn't even know if it was going to be legal to offer it to me anymore because it was too good. What do businesses do? What do we do? If you have below average wage workers, you should end your health plan, send them all over to the exchange. They'll get highly subsidized insurance and it's a better deal from that for that the workers than you can give them if you have above average wage workers they don't get much from the exchange you're better off to continue to provide it at work i don't want my i don't want my government paying for these things i don't want to send my but workers i mean it's not the right thing to do uh, but but employers shouldn't be in the business of providing health insurance to begin with i mean they were conscripted the federal government you know, it was during World War II, an emergency measure that they conscripted employers into providing health insurance. That was really where all the pr trouble began. The most important part of this sentence, uh, of this whole block here, America, was just that sentence. It was just an emergency measure. That's where it always begins. And look out, I think we've got a few crises headed our way. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you.